Okay, thank you very much. So uh, this uh, is a brief announcement, uh, which is good in the interest of time because we seem to be quite late on schedule. So I will try to make it even more brief, and I will try to make it uh, relaxed. So it's uh, it's going to be n it's not going to be very technical because it's just uh, ideas that in consensus lab we had mostly my colleague Enric Moniz had. Uh, I'm presenting his work. He unfortunately couldn't come, so I'm uh, I'm here to present mostly his ideas that he came up with in how to scale uh, asynchronous randomized Byzantine agreement. All right. So, what is the goal? The goal is uh, of the of this project of ours is that we want to have a Byzantine agreement that is optimally resilient to Byzantine failures. That means we tolerate as many Byzantine nodes in the system as is theoretically possible, or at least come close to it, come close to it asymptotically. Uh, we want to tolerate an adaptive adversary. Uh, I will, well, you probably, many of you already are very, very familiar with this concept. We'll get back to this uh, on the next slide anyway. Uh, we want it to be scalable, and uh, we want it to be asynchronous, which means by this famous FLP result that has been already discussed in uh, Lefteri's talk, uh, it means that the algorithm needs to be randomized because deterministic algorithms for for consensus are prohibited. Well, not, not prohibited, but just cannot exist in that sense. All right, so let's look at the system model. Uh, I will just skim over this. We want to have a we we want to have a algorithm that works in the asynchronous system model where we have some Byzantine processes that can fail arbitrarily and uh, we have n processes and f of them can be faulty and we want to reach a failure threshold such that the size of the system is only only needs to be greater than 3f plus 1. And uh, of course I said a Byzantine process can fail arbitrarily, and of course this is not quite true, because you always put some restrictions even on the Byzantine process. Uh, for example, that uh, it is computationally bounded, so it cannot arbitrarily invert hashes, uh, uh, cryptographic hashes, and so on. And uh, also, uh, we want the adversary that does control the scheduling of messages in the system not to be able to remove messages after the fact. That means the, uh, the adversary cannot look at the some process's message and see the content of that message and then decide, oh, I actually canceled this message. So even with these restrictions, the adversary is actually pretty, pretty strong. And uh, we further assume that uh, there is uh, public key infrastructure and that uh, any message sent from a correct process to another correct process will eventually be delivered. All right, so the basic ideas uh, that we are exploring in our algorithm are basically a combination of Bracha's uh, asynchronous Byzantine agreement algorithm and Algorand. Bracha's uh, algorithm, it's an ancient algorithm. I think it's older than me, actually. and uh, it's ba it's a round-based algorithm where there is some asynchronous rounds, and in each round the processes try to agree in three steps, and if they don't, they flip a coin. And uh, Algorand came up with this nice idea, or I don't know whether whether it was first used there, but there it was definitely made popular. That uh, you s you have in order to scale, you have a big system, and you have a committee sampled using VRFs and each node only communicates once with the rest of the system, and this is to uh, counteract the, the adversary that is adaptive. So nobody knows that I'm supposed to talk, so they cannot DOS me unless they DOS everybody, and when I do talk, I've already done my job, and uh, then, they, then the adversary can actually DOS me, and it doesn't affect the protocol anymore because I have nothing more to say. All right, and we, we combine these two approaches to get a robust multi-valued randomized agreement. Uh, all right, so just a, sm just a small recap on 
how we want to approach this. We start from Braha's randomized binary agreement, and uh, it's a protocol that uh, operates in asynchronous rounds, and there's three steps in each round. Mm. In, one, in the first step, I basically, I, I'm a node, I make sure that a proposal can be decided, or I look for a proposal that can be decided, and uh, in the second step, I look whether no other proposal than mine can be decided, if anything gets decided, and then in the third step, I either confirm or, uh, or confirm that, or I see that, oh, we actually still disagree, and I need to update my proposal. And it, in each step, I reliably broadcast what I currently say my proposal is, and wait for others to share their proposals. And uh, actually, this is my, my, my PhD advisor. Well, before he was my PhD advisor, he came up with this nice analogy in his course that this, uh, that imagine like people are walking in a corridor, and it's a narrow corridor, and this must have happened to you that you just walk down the corridor and then there's some person going opposite direction and, he, and you bump in each other and then you go, you go right and the other person goes right and then you go left and you keep doing this all the time. And uh, each time you pick a random direction, eventually everybody will go to their right or to their left and then you can go. And this is how, this is how you actually circumvent the FLP impossibility. It ties in perfectly with, with uh, what uh, Alefteris was saying in his talk, it was the first talk of, of, uh, of the summit, that uh, the FLP impossibility actually states that you cannot reach deterministic consensus only if you start from a disagreement. But if you start from a state where you already are agreeing, then, then you can reach, uh, then you can confirm that and reach uh, consensus. And this is exactly that. We, we, we start jumping from left to right, and then we, we don't know where to go. So what, what we do to break this pattern is that we just say, OK, I just pick a random position. And then when we happen to pick a consistent random position each, well, then, then, we, then we have agreed, or then we can agree. Now, the problem with this approach is that this is just a binary consensus, so there's only two possible values, I go left or I go right, and uh, it's expensive. Each of these rounds involves an n-square message exchange and, uh, and potentially a, a coin toss, which is also an expensive operation. So now, how do we, so this was kind of the background, and now how do we try to tackle these, uh, these issues to get to a more efficient and better algorithm? And this is really just the high-level ideas because this is fresh work in progress. So in Brachas binary agreement, the, the coin is flipped if in the so-called bivalent state. If, if we know that there's a bivalent state, that we know that both 1 and 0 potentially could be decided as a result of our consensus. And uh, the termination is guaranteed if all correct processes get the same coin result. So if I randomly choose to go to my right and the others randomly choose to go to their right, then we can pass the corridor. And uh, I mean, this analogy could be extended to more people in the run uh, eventually it will break, but this is the mental model. All right, so what we do to go from binary consensus to multi-valued consensus uh, is that if multiple values can be decided and we need to flip a coin, then uh, we flip a binary coin between, not between uh, 1 and 0. Well, we do flip a binary coin, this is between 1 and 0, but we map it to 0, meaning I take whatever I was proposing, and 1, I take whatever valid proposal I've seen so far that is the smallest, whatever smallest proposal I've seen so far. And uh, so in the next round, I will adopt the smallest proposal I've seen so far, and uh, eventually this would converge to the smallest proposal that, that everybody could uh, try to agree on using a binary coin flip. This, this is the high-level idea. Uh, and then, so okay, so we got from, we got from uh, binary consensus to multivalid consensus, so how do we reduce the message complexity? Well, 
uh, the reliable broadcast, we try to implement it using gossip. And uh, this slightly changes the safety property of uh, what we get as a result to also to probabilistic ones. And uh, then uh, we use a scalable and resilient share coin shared coin implementation. If we do need to flip a coin, we try to make it cheap as well. And uh, this is a uh, really work in progress as well. And uh, it's the ideas are based on a paper that is, uh, that is called Not a Coincidence that, prese that presents a shared coin implementation that is efficient. Now, more on this scalable and resilient shared coin. So it is, um, the ideas are improving on this existing work. And uh, it also processes, uh, where processes exchange random values. They rely on verifiable random functions. And uh, the core idea of that work that we also adopt is this, what they call a common core of processes uh, that uh, when they exchange some values or in some commitments to, to their shares, there, there is a, there's a notion of a minimum, uh, there's, a, there's an ordering on them and uh, with high probability the, the commitments that processes collect will contain the global minimum value of whatever has been proposed. And uh, so if all correct processes actually include, happen to include the minimum value, then, they, then all of those pick that value, which means they end up in a, uh, in a state where in the next round they can decide. This, this is the high level idea of it. And uh, also we adopt the random, uh, the Algorand approach where only a few randomly selected processes actually send messages and everybody listens. So to summarize, uh, we use ideas from Bracas agreement as the base, as the structure of the protocol. Uh, and we integrate ideas from Algorand and from the not a coincidence work in order to make uh, things more efficient. So uh, for Algorand, we use VRFs to select random committees and uh, circumvent the possibility of an adaptive adversary basically dosing some concrete nodes. And uh, from the other work, not a coincidence, we adopt the idea that if we choose a minimum value from the collected ones, there's a significant probability, and regardless of how, the system, how big the system is, there's a significant probability, not one, but significant, that, uh, that we actually happen to choose the same minimum value. And uh, this is, so this is what we are exploring and working on just as a brief announcement and uh, we'll keep you posted when we have more details on the protocols. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for the talk. Um, do you have any like uh, insight initially about sort of what sort of performance you'd expect, like per round complexity, ex kind of how fast it would terminate an expectation? On expectation, it should be a constant number of rounds hmm. because uh, the coin itself, uh, regardless of the regardless of the size of the system, mm -hmm. should have a constant expected. Uh, True, but you have like a linear number of maybe if a linear number of proposals, and then maybe different people see different ones, and you're flipping to kind of agree on the lowest one. So it seems like maybe it would be super constant. I don't know. Uh, what does it? What 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 is super constant? Well, uh, like <laughs> big, big, bigger bigger than constant. You mean? Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. Well, we didn't do the proper analysis of this yet. Sure. But uh, we want to have it. We want it to be at like maybe in this in the number of rounds. Mm. I would still say the expected number could could be constant. I couldn't imagine that. Okay. Because uh, because if you just pick the smallest value, regardless of how bit, how many uh, how many si how many processes you have, mm. you just. I, I guess it doesn't depend on the size because uh, the minimum value either is in the set or it's not. Yeah. Of what you collect. And maybe if you, yeah. Okay. With, with some constant probability. Mm -hmm. And then how many times you need to repeat it to on expectation to actually get it, it's, uh, it should be constant. Yeah. 
Yeah. The communication is not constant, though. Would it like quadratic per round? I mean, you're no, using we definitely aim for subquadratic per round. S so like uh, lambda times n, kind of? Like the security parameter times n, maybe? I don't know. Mm, yeah, it, it would be maybe n log n. Okay. If, if you use, if you use a gossip for, for broadcasting, and then everybody does that. But uh, again, these, the, I just presented the high level ideas, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's, okay. it's not even like my work. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is very I, was, well. I, was, I was properly briefed on it, but uh, I'm, we are trying to figure it out at the same <laughs> yeah, time. Sorry, I yeah, so I don't mean to grill it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but thank mm. you. We're, we're, this is exactly what we are trying to figure out now. Mm. It's very interesting. Thanks. <laughs>